Go. Hello, Nihao. Welcome back. When you would like to Wisdom Wednesday with Johnny Tiger. All right, all right, all right. It is Thursday, but we're just treating it like it's Wednesday because I fully intended to do this on Wednesday. And look, give me a break. It's been a whole day of nothing but trouble. First, and frigging rats outside chewed a new hole through my garbage can lid. So I actually had to go and get a new garbage can.、Uh, you wouldn't think getting a twenty gallon garbage can to replace your old one would be that complicated. I found the suitable one, all right. It got one that's twenty gallon and has a metal construction, so I figured the rat wouldn't chew through it. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have wheels, so transporting it back and forth. Would be a bit of a pain. The garbage here get really, really heavy because of the two cats. So we have a lot of cat litter, and、uh, each time you try to get the garbage bag out,、um, it's almost like the friggin' bag is like 100 pounds. It's almost like you got a whole body inside. Yeah, creepy.、Um, so I got the metal garbage can, but it doesn't have wheels. So I ended up. Having to get a second garbage can, this one's slightly larger. It's plastic, but it has wheels. So what I'm going to do is just stick the metal one inside the plastic one, so we can use the wheel to move it back and forth, and then、uh, the metal will still protect the garbage inside from the rats. And then I came home, fully intended to do Wisdom Wednesday, and then yeah, my computer is giving me issues.、Uh, Email not working, not reading properly, and uh, for a, uh, for a long time, my G key wouldn't work. Yeah, I'm not saying my G string, but the G key. So anytime you have to type anything with the letter G in it, the computer will freak out.、Uh, I don't know. It's so. It's what are you laughing? <laughs> I say G key, not G spot key. <coughs> I don't know. Kitten is weird. Laughing at my computer's G spot key. The device keeps thinking you're talking to it because you're saying the C word. Oh, all、oh, right, right. <laughs> I forgot about that too. <sighs> like I told you guys, nothing but trouble all day long. And now this kitten's giving me trouble. <laughs> I think after the video, I'm going to have to go tickle her or something. <laughs> anyway, Wisdom Wednesday. Now that she just ruined my entire dignity. <laughs> now that I can't even muster up any wisdom anymore. Good time to talk about. What we're going to talk about today? Eunuch. Yeah. <laughs> It is. Hey, hey, we got to be a little bit more sensitive about that. Like, What? The poor guys. <laughs> Why? Why is that a good time? It's not a good time. Because I'm feeling decidedly lacking my manhood. No. No. So eunuch. That some of you don't know that term. It's a man who underwent、uh, a little surgery,、uh, modification, and、uh, not usually for the reason that people that are transgender, or transsexual, go through today. I mean, if you're transgender. Transsexual,、um, you kind of do that surgery because you want your identity. You kind of willingly do that.、Uh, you you really want to do it. Now, eunuch, most of the time, actually they did it willingly as well.、Uh, we'll touch upon that in a little bit. But 
the circumstances were usually not that philosophical. Most of the time, and I'm strictly speaking, talking about the eunuchs in Chinese history. I did not know if eunuch was a thing in a European culture or、uh, other culture as well. I kind of suspect that in Persian or Arabic uh, uh, Arabia、um, culture, that, that eunuchs may be a thing. But I don't know. I I am only、uh, talking about specifically the Chinese eunuchs. First,、uh, let's debunk some of the myths that people have regarding eunuchs.、Uh, one of the wide, widely held stereotype of eunuchs. Uh, is that eunuchs、um, were all feminine looking? They they lack body hair. They 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 look、uh, decidedly not manly. This is definitely not true.、Uh, traditionally speaking, most of the earlier days that Chinese people、uh, that, that when men were turned to eunuchs. It's only the penis that were removed.、Uh, the testicles usually didn't get removed, mainly because, well, you got to remember we are talking about like a thousand years ago. They didn't really have the kind of technology、uh, patching up people that we do today. When you cut off a penis, not that I have any experience with that, but when you cut off a penis. That surgical scar, that that wound, is a lot easier to contain than if you try to remove someone's testicle.、Uh, removing someone's testicle again, not that I have any experience, but removing someone's te- testicle, especially with the technology back then, would probably be fatal. I mean, testicle for、uh, for a lot of you ladies that don't know that. This is why when you kick someone, when when you kick a guy in the testicle, it hurts so much. It's actually connected to the inside. It, it's a, it, it's connected to the organs inside. Yeah,、uh, it it's came down. It dropped out down from our、uh, stomach cavity,、uh, and just end up down there. It's it's not just some little family jewel that can be removed easily、uh, without the proper. Knowledge, equipment, technology, medical science—that would be pretty fatal. So, this is a long-winded way of saying a lot of eunuchs had their testicles. They they all they were they're just lacking their penis, which means、uh, being turned into eunuch didn't necessarily impact their testosterone level. So they would still sound like men. They will still have facial hair.、Uh, they will still have the urges to have relationship, and so on and so on.、Um, and this lead to our second misnomer: is a lot of people think that eunuchs either have no relationship, or they were gay,、uh, homosexual, or some people say they were probably really weird, like little boys, or some horrible stuff like that. Now I'm sure. Some of them were pretty extreme, freaky,、uh, but knowing that most of them actually still had their testicle and they still have their manly urges、uh, throughout history, a lot of eunuchs actually had relationship. They couldn't necessarily consummate their love. But that didn't stop them from having relationship with women. Who were these women? These were the women that the maids, the serving women in the palace. And you got to remember, back then,、uh, when when your maid or serving women in the palace working with the queen and the emperor's one thousand concubines. You 
don't really get to go home. You stay there, because otherwise you will pose too much of a security risk. So, which means you may spend twenty years in that palace with other women, and the only man you will ever see is the emperor. And obviously, you can't do anything with the emperor. So, a lot of these women would、uh, would eventually either become in lesbian, or they would hitch up with one of the eunuchs.、Uh, you know,、uh, having a man still even not not a complete man, or still better than nothing.、Um, you can still have、uh, kind of a wife husband thing. Going on, you can sleep together and、uh, work together and all that stuff. So this, this, I'm not even like、uh, making this up. If you look into uh, uh, Chinese history, there were specific matrimony terms for、uh, a palace maid who was a lesbian, and a specifically、um, matrimony term for when a palace maid take up with a Unit and become a couple. So these were all recorded. I will give you an example from the Tang Dynasty,、uh, the the Tang Tang Emperor, who was thirteen years old at the time. Yeah, he became emperor very early.、Uh, was in his study, doing his homework. I guess. I mean, he was thirteen. I'm sure he had homework.、Uh, he was in his study,、uh, doing whatever, and then he suddenly heard people fighting outside the study. Now this was a very rare thing. People do not just misbehave themselves,、uh, especially when they think the emperor can hear them. Like if, if back then, it's a it's a good way to look, get your head chopped off if you disturb the emperor. But yeah, the emperor was in his study, and he heard、uh, someone fighting outside, like a lot of scuffling and、uh, things falling, and、uh, other people、uh, cheering them on. And so, yeah, he's thirteen years old,、uh, still a kid at heart. So he came out of the study to see what's going on, and he saw two of his favorite eunuchs stripped down to the waist, and. Wrestling, punching, kicking, scratching, on the ground, and obviously he had to find out what happened. So he went over, told them to stop this nonsense, asked them what's going on, and it turned out that both of these eunuchs fell in love with the emperor's nanny, and.、Uh, So they they decided to have a little one on one to see who could be、uh, with the nanny, and this is like true historical account. The emperor then said, "Well, this is not up to you guys. This should be up to my nanny to decide." So he summoned the nanny、uh, to his study, told the two eunuchs to come in, and. He asked the nanny, "Who, which one of these two would you rather be with?" And then the nanny chose one, and the emperor said, "Okay, then,、uh, because I'm the emperor, my word is law. So from now on, my nanny and this unit, we are a couple. And this other unit, please leave this palace. You are unemployed. Sorry, can't have you around if you are going to keep causing trouble." So. This was a known fact、uh, that eunuchs and、uh, work serving women and、uh, maids would、uh, become couples throughout history, even though eunuchs did not have their manhood. So yes, they they definitely had normal relationship. Third, the third misnomer is a lot of people feel that eunuchs were、uh, weak, feminine. Uh, uh, They were always scheming and treacherous. You can't be further from the truth. And those of you who watched Game of Thrones, you know that eunuchs are bloody scary.、Uh, they they make really scary warriors. Especially if you read Game of Thrones books. In the Game of Thrones bro- books, there was a super badass eunuch 
called uh, big bellows. I think a strong bellows. Yeah, strong bellows. And it's like big and fat eunuch dude who kicked everyone's ass in war in battle. And just totally one of my favorite characters in the book. I was really sad and really annoyed that they didn't include strong bellows in the TV series. So now some people may say, "Oh, that's just the author exaggerating. How can someone who missing their manhood be that badass?" You'd be surprised. I mean, can you 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 can you imagine if you still have your testicles but you don't have a penis? That means you have a lot of urges that you can't really do anything about. You'd be a very frustrated dude. I mean, nowadays when you are in extreme sports like boxing and football and all that stuff. The coach tell you before a big game you are not supposed to have sex for a couple of weeks, and that alone is supposed to improve your performance. So imagine how aggressive some of these units can be. Historically, from the Ming Dynasty, so about four、uh, hundred years ago, from、uh, now four hundred years ago,、uh, Ming Dynasty had already established a special branch. Uh, of special forces units,、uh, it, they, their their duty was to、uh, ferry out all the traitors and people who were committing treason,、uh, people who were plotting against the emperor. These units were highly trained. They were like the Ming Dynasty Chinese version of today's CIA. Okay, they they were highly trained in both torture.、Uh, Diplomacy,、uh, all the arts of deception, and a lot of them were some of the best martial artists they could find in that era. So, yeah, eunuchs were definitely super scary during the Ming Dynasty. During the Qing Dynasty, the last dynasty, during the Opium War, when the British people and the outside forces invaded the imperial city, when the Emperor himself and his mother and all his、uh, generals flee,、uh, fled the imperial city. They ran away. The last forces, the last force that held the imperial city against white people, was a special troop of eunuchs. These were the martial eunuchs. Every one of them were handpicked by the emperor for being、uh, very strong, very brave. Very great at fighting, so these eunuchs held the gate long enough for the emperor to escape. So this is to say that,、uh, yeah, badass eunuchs definitely not just in、uh, Game of Thrones books or TV series. It, it's a real thing. So. How? Why would someone become a eunuch? Well, first, you the let's establish the purpose of eunuchs. Because the way Chinese、uh, emperors and the the succession of the throne always worked is not so different from European succession, which is.、Uh, Emperor would pass the throne down to the prince,、uh, whoever, whichever prince he chose to succeed him. Now this sounds nice and straightforward, but this causes a problem. The emperor can't be there all the time, and as the emperor has like one thousand wives, so how can he be sure that the son, the, the sons or daughters, are his? Well, the most simplistic way to know, because there's no DNA test back then, the easiest way was to number one, the women were not allowed to leave the palace unless under heavy, heavy security. So whenever, if you saw the queen or any of the emperor's concubines leave the、uh, palace, they were always followed by two or three hundred. Elite royal guard, and no one's even allowed to talk to them. So that's number one. The women were under heavy guard all the time. 
Number two is to make sure that the only men that could get close to these women and perform men、uh, the the husband and wife、uh, thing would be the emperor himself, no one else. So back then,、uh, to enter into the private quarters of a palace would be death penalty. That there's an old Law that said,、uh, now back then the the palace it's split into front quarter and the back quarter. The front quarter is where the emperor meet with his generals and his ministers and sign paperwork and all that stuff when he where he worked. And then between the front quarter and the back quarter, there's there's usually a building with a plaque on it that says. Past this point, even if you are only ten years old, you will die. Okay, so that means unless you were the emperor, or unless you were a female or a eunuch, if you had a dick, if you had a penis, and you were not the emperor, you pass this point, you die. Your head, bye bye. Like no argument, even if you were just a child. So、it's strictly taboo for any male to pass into the private quarter of the palace. But of course, there were a lot of things that needed to be done: security,、uh, bodyguard,、uh, cleaning, and uh, uh, housekeeping, and grocery, and cooking, and all that. There's a lot of things that needed to be done. Not all these roles could be filled by women. So, Chinese people came up with the idea of, well, let, well let's let's uh, uh, get men to get their、uh, problematic parts chopped off, and then we can, and they can work in the palace. Now, this obviously, no man in his right mind,、uh, who is very living a very comfortable life. Would voluntarily go and do this. Now it's just not the kind of job that is very appealing. So the kind of a, a reward for being a eunuch was extremely high. Not to mention because you are a eunuch, you are the only person. You're one of the only one that can be there with the emperor, twenty-four hours a day. You are the, one of the only people that can be there with the queen. And all the other wives all the time, which means even though you may not be a duke or baron, you are a very influential person. You have a lot of influence.、Uh, a lot of people will try to bribe you to learn things like what does the emperor like to eat, what kind of、uh, flower does the queen like. This kind of information is highly valuable for people who want to get on the emperor's good side, and only you would know about that. So, being a eunuch has this perk as being on the inside, having access to all the inside track. Not to mention the amount of money that being a eunuch would make. I mean, you are handling grocery for the emperor, right? You can tell the emperor. That uh, uh, the the the、uh, a pound of cucumber is two thousand gold. The emperor wouldn't really know. <laughs> well, I mean, emperor is not idiot, so you can't be too too crazy about that. But you know what I mean? Like, you know, let's say normal people pay、uh, one copper for a cucumber, right? You can tell the emperor that the cucumber. Because you are the emperor, so we have to give you the best cucumber. So、uh, the cucumber we get you is、uh, two gold piece each. The emperor, number one, the emperor have no idea how much cucumbers actually cost. Number two, the emperor would think, well, okay, if you are getting me the best, that makes sense. Third, two gold pieces is nothing to an emperor.、Uh, the emperor is sitting on millions and millions of gold. Two gold pieces is nothing. So imagine every day you have to get the emperor food. You it's up to you how much you want to report, and then all the rest of that money going to your own pocket. So being a eunuch was very, very、uh, 
advantages in both power, position, influence, and money. The the the, the、uh, finance is just crazy. Not to mention, you get、uh, a very handsome retirement benefit as well. Even then, with all that benefit, really the only people that would become unit were people from really poor family or people who were struggling to earn a living,、um, and so on. Because to have your a little surgery means you will no longer be able to pass on the genes. You will no longer to be able to produce offspring. Uh, so this this was a big thing for Chinese people. If you are not bringing,、uh, if you are not reproducing, this was almost a crime in Chinese uh, uh, history. Uh, Confucius once said there were three biggest taboo in Chinese people. The biggest of them all is not procreating. So you can imagine that. For a lot of people, yeah. Even though you might be starving to death, but the thought of not being able to pass on your gene and being put down as a, a, a useless member of your family was a big thing. A lot of people still wouldn't become eunuch. Not to mention, this was such a big deal that by law, a person who was a eunuch because he was no longer A complete person was not allowed to be buried on his family plot. He's not allowed to be buried、uh, with his ancestors, with his parents, because he is not a complete person. This is why a lot of eunuchs, after they retire, they do anything they can to try to retrieve the part of them that got chopped off. How was that done? Well, we'll get to that eventually. But just know that this was a big thing. A lot of them,、uh, before they die, they would pay millions of gold,、uh, or go through all kind of、uh, influences to retrieve that missing body part. So some people think that. Uh, becoming a eunuch was an easy thing. Like, okay, I'm starving to death. My family is starving to death. I'm going to go into the kitchen, get a meat cleaver, and uh, just uh, be a brave guy and、uh, do a little surgery myself. No, it's not that simple.、All、right. First, you cannot cauterize that wound. Don't forget, you still need your your urethra. You still need to pee. You can't cauterize that.、Uh, if you cauterize that, then you <laughs> you you might die shortly after. So it's not a kind of surgery that you can do at home, not easily back then at, at least. I don't know if you can even do it now. Don't try don't try it at home, okay? Ah,、uh, so no, it it you can't just. Go into the kitchen and do it yourself. Not to mention, historically, this was something that needed to be done by a professional who then have to give you a certificate. Okay, so if you get it done anywhere, that's not the、uh, emperor appointed special surgeon. It doesn't count. Okay, you you chopped off your Bits for nothing. You 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 need to go to a place that is certified. It's like getting a driver's license today. You can't just print one out at home. You can't just like have your friend make one out for you. You have to go to a designated agency.、Uh, getting this little surgery done back then was like that too.、Uh, you you need to go to a designated、uh, place for it. Why? Because This place、uh, is responsible for doing it right. So, if let's say if you claim to be a eunuch and you say you have the surgery done and you go into the palace 
and then uh, two years later they find out that no, you they, you you still have your penis, and now uh, two of the emperor's wives are pregnant. Well, now they know who to blame. Now they because there's only a couple of designated、uh, spot, so they all all they have to do is find who certify you, and then the entire agency will get shut down and. People put to death for treason and all that stuff, and of course you will get put to death too. So, to go and get this done at the、uh, designated place was quite、uh, a ceremony、uh, process as well. First, you need to bring twenty. Gold pieces. Now, some people will say, "Well,、uh, wait, hold on a second. That doesn't make sense. If you are going to get this done because you're really, really poor, where would you come up with the twenty gold pieces? Well, that's not their problem. Don't forget, once you become a unit, you are going to make money really quick. Now, money is going to be nothing in a short,、uh, short while. So, a lot of people will go and borrow, no matter how." They'll go and borrow this twenty gold, just so they can get this surgery done. Because they know, as soon as they become a eunuch, they'll be able to repay this in no time at all. Okay, so you need to bring twenty gold pieces. It's a very expensive surgery. You need to be deemed physically、uh, able to withstand this trauma. It's a very traumatic surgery. No, make no mistake about it. This is. Like amputation in a primitive setting,、uh, there's no anesthesia, there's no、uh, numbing medicine or whatsoever. Right? There's no cauterization, there's no uh, 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 sterilization, and all that stuff. This is really dangerous stuff. So you need to physically be very fit for this. You need to bring also. A month's worth of food, and、uh, a cartload of firewood, and you need to、uh, you need to go stay at the surgeon's hospital, the, and then you have to stay with them for a month.、Uh, that this is your pre-surgery screening. So you you are going to show up at their door. This is why you have to bring your whole month's worth of food. But they, you know, they they are giving you a surgery. They're not going to feed you for a month. You got to bring your own food. So you bring your own food. Ah,、uh, you bring the firewood. Why why do you need firewood? Well, we'll get to that in a little while. So you bring your own food. You stay at the hospital for a month. This is a month where they assess: Are you physically okay to take the surgery? Because if you die, they are responsible.、Uh, if you die, they have to pay your family back the gold and、uh, pay even more money, and it's a bad reputation for the agency.、Uh, so they'll also expose you to、uh, there's other people's surgery. You get to watch other people getting their penis chopped off、uh, during this month,、okay? so you know what you're getting into. Now, why do you need to bring the firewood? Because this surgery can only be performed at the end of December and the beginning of January, where the weather is the coldest in the whole year. Why is that? Because that's the only time of the year where they can relatively guarantee there's no flies or other insect that's going to、uh, infect your wound. Okay, so. If you do it, if you do the surgery in the summertime,、uh, and some fly get get into your womb, and then you get infected and die, that's bad for the agency. So they only to perform the surgery at the deepest part of winter, when it's super super cold. So you need to bring firewood, so、uh, they can at least keep you warm during the surgery, so you don't immediately go into shock. On the day of the surgery. You are secured to the bed with、uh, ropes. Tie up your arm, your leg, your head, so you don't thrash around. 
and then the surgeon, before even picking up the scalpel, knife or scissor, whatever I don't know what they use,、uh, will ask you three questions. This is a very pivotal, important point in this whole process because if you hesitate, if you answer any of these three questions,、uh, and they feel that you are not answering truthfully, or if they have doubt about how sincere you are, they will、uh, take off the rope, tell you, "Here's your gold. You can get take your gold back. Go home. You are not. You, we are not performing the surgery." Question number one: Are you here willingly, voluntarily? Your answer have to be yes, right? If you say ah、uh, yes, if you hesitate, if you say no, sorry, you are going home. You can't be a unit. Question number two: You will have no regret for the rest of your life. You won't regret this. You can't say I don't know. You can't say things like, "Well, I I I don't think so." No, and if your answer is not yes, sorry, go home. Not doing the surgery. Question number three. You will not be able to have offspring, and you will not be able to、uh, rejoin your ancestor. You will be an incomplete man for the rest of your life. And you will not blame me for it. Again, if your answer is anything but yes, go home. All this is basically their version of the waiver waiver form back then,、uh, because the agency have to be absolutely sure that you are not going to come back for revenge later. Don't forget, eunuchs were very powerful people, have a lot of influences. The agency have to be sure that they. Uh, you know what you were doing. They know what they were doing. Everyone's on the、uh, up and up. Everyone's on the same page. Let's say you answer yes to all three questions. The surgeon pick up the tool and well, we'll we'll gloss over the gruesome details. After the surgery, you don't even get to lay there and rest. There's two very muscular guys in the room. That will pick you up by the arm and force you to walk around the room、uh, for 20, 30 minutes. This is to make sure that、uh, there's going to be circulation and gangrene won't set in. And every day while you're recovering from the surgery, they'll force you to walk, force you to go through physical activities, basically give you your little rehab、uh, during the recovery procedure. Now, what do they do with the、uh, chopped off bits afterward?、Uh, like I said earlier, we are going to get to here.、Um, after the body part is removed, it is put in the jar with uh, preservative uh, fluid and herbs and things that would、uh, slow down decay. And the agency will hold on to it. So later, when you become a eunuch and when you retire, you can come back. And buy it from the agency, and so、uh, you can rejoin your ancestor. You can,、uh, when you die, they can bury that with you, so you can go meet your ancestor as a complete person. Now, some people may say, "Well, we hear about the stories where eunuchs that they bribe the agency, so." They they actually get to go into the palace and they still have their penis attached, and and they they get up to all kind of no good. I can pretty confidently tell you guys that wouldn't happen. Why why would I say that? Because every three years, every three years, all the eunuch have to go through an examination by a new doctor every three years. And the purpose is to make sure that they are all properly fixed. And if there's any question, any doubt, any problem, 
that get found out during this examination, the eunuch in question, including his whole family, will be put to the death. The agency who helped him lie to the emperor will get、uh, everyone will get put to the death. It's serious matter. So, yeah, if you get certified by an agency that you were charged, you you were、uh, you had the surgery done. Then you had the surgery done. There's no faking it. No, no, no one would be able to fake it. I know this、uh, was a, a little bit of a WTF kind of episode, and but I came across this、uh, information on Unix and all the ins and outs and how the process was and all this, and I thought it was extremely. Gruesome yet very interesting、uh, tidbit from Chinese history. I wanted to share with you guys, and I hope that you guys have found this、uh, equally enlightening and entertaining.、Uh, hopefully, you guys didn't have a weak stomach or feel too squeamish.、Uh, thank you for being here with us for Wisdom Wednesday. We'll be back again shortly tomorrow for Toy Thursday. For now, 谢谢 and 再见。